All right, so this is where we left off. We had our HA channel denoised, our H beta denoised, and our O3 wizard denoise, channel separated, and stars removed. So I have three methods of recombining data. The first one is where you just take the HA, O3, and H beta, and you place them back in the R, G, and B channels. This is really good for like if you're processing, say, a galaxy, and you didn't use like a triad ultra filter. You might have just had a UVIR filter in place, no filter at all, or maybe... Um, something like an L pro filter or a op L optolong pro filter for just uh, enhancing broadband data, cleaning up light pollution, etc. This way actually just demonstrates the power of the superposition principle, separating out your channels individually for your red, green, blue, processing them according to their needs, and then recombining them. You'll see that it produces a, a better um, recombined data than just the simple first stretch, uh, the, after the stretch data that we saw and, and I'll demonstrate that to you. Second method is my narrow band recombination data using split complementary colors. That's the one that's going to be a little more complicated, but the one that is um, very, very, very neat that, um, that I came up with. I, I hadn't seen it anywhere, and the idea had come to me how to do it um, when I started thinking really hard about these things. Um, and then my third method is another one that's pretty unique, but I base it off of Pix Insights pixel math, where you can recombine channels according to your narrowband data um, using pixel math that adds up to 100% um, in terms of percentage of weights. And, and I'll show that. That may be a separate video, it may, or I may include it at the end of this, depending on how long this, this video goes. But this one's going to focus on my first two main recombination techniques and maybe that third method, but I'll definitely release that third method eventually. Um, but these two are the primary methods. So the first thing you need to do after it comes out of Topaz denoise, um, not necessarily if you did it in Photoshop for denoise, but if you look here, it's showing that there's three channels. We don't want that. Um, what happens is denoise thinks after it's denoised your monochrome image that it's a color image, but it's not. And so what we just need to do is go to image mode and change it to a grayscale image and just this message discard color information yeah discard there actually is no color information and this is just monochrome to begin with and we do that to each image just to make sure it's back into the grayscale and we just go ahead and save each of those Okay, now we're ready to start for the first method. So first method we want to do is select your HA layer, hit Control A, then Control C to copy it. Go File New, you want the clipboard option selected, and instead you want to go to RGB 16-bit. Hit Create, and now we're in the Layers, or the Channels um, tab here. You could go to the Layers tab, it's just a blank background. But we want to go into the Channels and say Select Red, then we'd hit Control V. Then we'd go to our O3 data, hit Control A, Control C, go back to our new untitled image that we're creating, go into the green channel, hit Control V. Then we'd want to go into the H beta, hit Control A, Control C, go into our untitled document that we just created, and the blue channel, hit Control V. And now it's recombined our data to just the classic RGB style. So if we click on it now, this is what we have. We've kind of recombined it and we have a cleaned up um, method. So let me open just the, the starless image of what we had after we did our stretch. Here it is. Just so you can, we can look at the differences between the two. So it does look like we need to adjust levels in this um, if you were going to go this route per channel, and that's fine. What we'd have to do is look at our histogram. It's gonna be pretty much aligned because that's how we had it stretched, but it might not look the same if we do look into the level. So let's just look at that really quick. Let's duplicate the layers here. We're just gonna look at the levels, hit Control L. And so what you can see over here on the right hand side is there's this huge gap in the data and our kind of our input level midpoint 
should really be pushed up right to where the histogram is telling off right here. Just like on the black point, we usually move it up. It should be doing that. So we do it on a per channel basis again, because it's going to be different. You see that for green, blue, red, and this is going to bring out the data more. So if we start at blue, what I do is first, let's adjust the levels and then bring this in. It's going to change the color of our data as you, as you watch it here because it's, it's kind of a strong blue, but then we go to the green channel and we're going to do the same thing. Let's, let's see, how far did we go in the blue? Went pretty far there. Let's actually pull out the blue a little. And we'll do the same with the green right to the edge. And we'll kind of maybe do multiple iterations depending on. And then back to the red. Red will pull in a little more. About right here. Hit OK. And look at our histogram. So we're a little bit more stretched. It looks like we could do a channel mixer and bring up our, our red and blue channel some. Um, but we can also probably look at levels and adjust it that way. So let's go in the red, the green, and the blue now. So now let's just adjust the black points of each. All right to the tail of the data. Red doesn't need as much. And let's look at our histogram there. Yeah, that's helped align the data a lot better. And so looking between these two now, just for a tor uh, recombination, you can definitely see that this is before we've kind of boost any saturation or individual colors, like for color contrast enhancement, like my, my last uh, tutorial video showed for using color contrast techniques. This would now boost your color contrast even more. You'd start getting blues out here a lot more when you when you stretched it. So you could take this process and and go through it all the way based off that color contrast tutorial I had, and you get pretty decent results. This would be a more natural looking, um, I guess, image in terms of your your one shot color images straight out of the camera, but a very cleaned up version, and you'd actually get more color. Um, breakout where you'd see more of more of the blues versus the reds, etc. And so this is a common technique I use for galaxies. I'll separate the channels out and then I'll recombine them for galaxies. And this is how I get more color out of the data I collect naturally. You can see there's more blues here, but I'm color balanced. Whereas here, it, we're showing we're color balanced too, but red looks really dominant. Whereas here, you can definitely see the red, greens, and blues more are, are combining. So this is the first basic um, technique for recombination. And I'm not going to pursue this further because what I will pursue further is my, my second method for recombining. So let's go ahead and look at that second method. All right, so I'm not going to save this because that's not ultimately what I want. I want to do the other recombination technique that I've been talking to you guys about. So I'm just going to clear all this out. Um, I'm going to keep these three open, however, and I'm going to go back to my HA Wizard Nebula data. Control A, Control C, File, New. We want the clipboard option again. We want RGB this time, 16 bit, and we're going to hit Create. Now, this is where we just hit control V under the layer section. We're not going into the channels and pasting into the red, green, or blue. We're coming here to the layers and hitting control V and we get this monochrome HA um, grayscale version. And what I do here is I rename that to HA. Really it's sulfur two HA, but I just call it HA to keep it short. Then I go to my O3 data, same thing, control A, control C, go to my new untitled document, hit control V and I rename that to my O3 data. Then I do the same for H beta. Control A, Control C, come here, Control V, H B beta, H B for H beta. Then what I do is I go back to just my HA channel visible only and I hit Control C, Control V and I make a direct copy. Do the same thing for HA, Control C, Control V, 
and then do the same thing for H beta. And I'll show you why I'm doing this. So now's a good time to save this. And typically I, I kind of keep the same structure that I did before for naming or naming file convention, um, except I get rid of the star net part or stretch. And now what I do is I, I just do um, recombine. And then I say uh, like a version one to track a version because I might have iterations or go back if I notice some kind of error. So this is version one, hit save. And image compression none. Okay, and so now I have a new name for this. I can go ahead and close out of these other windows now and, and just work within here. So now what I wanna do, so I wanna bring one of my HAs up, one of my O3s below that, and then one of my H betas below the O3. And I'm gonna go to my HA layer and I'm gonna hit Control U. And so this is where you'd go to your split complementary um, colors and, and determine what you want. If you don't remember that, it was in my other video where I talked about um, the color wheel and different color contrasts. And I ultimately got to, well, there's these split complementaries, there's direct complementaries, and then there's split complementaries when you're dealing with like three uh, different colors, or there's the triadic. The split complementary isn't equal distances between two colors, but um, the triadic is equal distances between three, whereas in the split complementary, you have this massive contrast between one color from two colors that are kind of contrasting. And so I like the split complementary. That's actually what the Hubble palette is, but I'm not going to use the Hubble palette. I like uh, something uh, more like this, where I use the cyan color, this blue color, and like an orangish red color. And so I've kind of memorized this. I, I've looked up the the RGB values for these points numerous times. And so I know what kind of colors I want, but you can dial it in by eye as well um, just to get the hue ballpark because the hue is here and you kind of see where you might want to be. And so what you do is you click colorize. Key here is you want the saturation to 100%, but then you want to go to something like 20 to get this, this optimal color you're kind of looking for. And... And so we can we can boost this to you know any kind of hue we want now uh, on the color wheel in the red spectrum, green, red, or whatever. But this is hydrogen alpha. And hydrogen alpha I want to be represented as kind of like this orange-ish, um, yellowish red kind of color. And so um, we can see if this works. I kind of like 25 working with 25 on the hue. It gives me this orangish color. And then typically what you can do is you can bring down um, this guy to like around minus 30 or so for, for the lightness. And so this is HSL. So I remember showing you guys um, a chart. I'll go back to it actually. Um, here it is. So for hydrogen beta oxygen three hydrogen alpha, I said, here's the RGB value, but it corresponds to these HSL values. And I actually had an error in here and I forgot to, to fix it. This should be a negative sign. So this is your HSL value. So for hydrogen alpha, you're typically at a minus 37.5 on the L. And, and this way, when you recombine the data, it keeps the equivalent RGB value of the data. That's just the HSL um, transformation. And so I approximately follow these. Once again, it's all kind of um, how the data looks, but I, I typically go around minus 30, and sometimes for O3 and H beta, I just keep it at zero, and that's probably what I'll do for this, this one. So I like it there, I'm gonna hit okay. Then I'm gonna toggle this guy off, I'm gonna go to O3, I'm gonna hit control U, colorize, boost the saturation up, but here I'm gonna go 167. And this gives me this kind of a true O3 color. I believe if I go back to here, oxygen three, it's saying is 161. So I was off by a few. So if I go to 161, it gets even more green. And I actually don't like that. And that's why I think I've kind of converged around 167 because it's a little bit more of a, a bluer tint because I don't like green. I've said this before uh, very much. And I, and I might nuke some of this green out of it later and I'll show you how I do that. 
Um, however, I like it at first for when it recombines with the other layers. Um, the way the, the colors add together look really nice. But sometimes there's some leftover green that I don't like and I'll nuke that out. But it, but it all balances out in the end. And so I like this. I'm going to hit OK. I'm not going to mess with the lightness. You can if you want, but really it kind of darkens it up um, a lot. I think it was like minus 27, 26. So you can see the difference. But I honestly haven't noticed too much of a difference with the, the L side and the HSL conversion to this. And, and once again, you don't have to use a direct conversion like that. You can stick to this. It's not going to be too terrible of a result. And, and if you find that, that it, something seems off in these two layers, your O3 and H beta, where you set it to zero, well, you can always go back because you're using a non-destructive workflow and, and redo that and see if it turns out to a better result. But from my experience, this seems to work well. So I'm going to toggle that off and now I'm going to go to H beta and I hit control U. I'm going to colorize it, boost the saturation to hundred. And now I'm going to go to about 210 for my blue. Really, I think it's about 191 um, it is also a good color. And so anywhere from 191 to 210 are, are different shades of blue. I actually like 191 slightly better. And I think here in hydrogen beta, uh, it's saying 197. So once again, I'm kind of off with my numbers, but 191 to 197. I think I've used 191 a lot before. 197 is a nice blue too. I kind of like that as well. Let me look at 191 again. It's a little bit more of a lighter blue and I like that 197 it's a little bit of a deeper blue and so these are choices you'll have to make what what colors do you want to show through here um, I don't know part of me just wants to stick with 191 well yeah actually sorry I'm indecisive let's go 197 hit OK and so now I have three colorized layers. I have my, my red, uh, my HA layer, my O3 layer, and my H beta layer. So I have a red, green, and a blue layer. And so it's like, well, how do I combine these to really show this amazing mixture of the unique data? Because you gotta remember the HA, the O3, and the H beta, they truly do have unique data in them. And you see this all the time when you get someone using a, a monochrome camera, filter wills, spending tons of hours, and then they put it in the PixInsight, and PixInsight does its um, layer recombination magic and pixel math, et cetera, and they get these really cool, unique combinations. And so I was thinking, well, how do I show that, that, that those different data layers on top of each other where they mix so well and really maximize contrast because right now I just have three different layers that are just like reddish, orange, green, and blue. It's not too exciting. Um, and so I thought, well, how can I get the O3 data to mix with the HA or the H beta data to mix with the combined HA and O3 data? And I and typically you can use layer masks and say, well, I'm just going to look for where the data is unique or um, do like this color range selection and and say, oh, okay, well, this has a lot of this color here, and I'm going to adjust the, the this fuzziness to select some color range in my data. But that's not super accurate either, and it kind of can create weird boundaries between the color data. And then this thought occurred to me about masks and masking and unique data. I was like, well, what if I knew the exact data and I could mask in the exact data. And I was like, oh, that'd be awesome. I was like, man, well, that seems kind of hard to do. But um, it actually isn't. It's actually pretty straightforward. So let's say that I want to combine HA and O3 first. I want to combine these two images together and see what the data looks like. Well, let's toggle off. Let's keep HA on, but toggle off the O3 H beta and H beta grayscale, and for a moment, even toggle off the HA here and just look at the O3 data. Let's go ahead and copy the O3 data because this is the exact O3 data we want in the monochrome version, right? And it's black. 
And so if you recall with a layer mask, um, if you have black, the data goes through. Uh, the data from the layer beneath will come through. But if you have white, the data won't. And so I thought, well, if I put the exact data on here, so I'm going to go in, I'm going to alt click into the layer mask that I just created. And I do a control V because I copied the O3 data, right? The grayscale O3 data. Well, this doesn't solve my problem because only the black area is going to pass. So actually the white is going to be blocked and not show through what I want. And then I thought to myself, well, duh, there's an easy way to invert a grayscale image such that my white areas now turn black and my black areas now turn white and the layer masking works perfectly. And the O3 data that I want uniquely to come through only from the O3 layer will come through. And so we just hit control I. It's as simple as that and our data is inverted. Now it's not inverted perfectly. Let's look. If I click on my HA now, you'll see there's a difference than before. Um, something's changed in my data. So if I right click here and I just disable layer, dis disable layer mask, you see this is my orange that I normally had for HA. But if I enable it, some O3 data is coming through and combining with this. But if you look here, if I alt click back in my mask, this doesn't really look right yet. And so, well, it's because what we've done is we need to adjust levels and um, curves for this guy slightly. So you can see the levels are totally off. So what I do is I bring this white point all the way to the tip of the data. And then I adjust this white point right to where the data starts to begin right about there. And now look, all of a sudden my inverted data kind of shows through. So this is my O3 layer once again. And this is what's going to be, this is the data that anywhere in the black is going to let be let through. That data is going to be let through from the layer underneath. So all my O3 data from the layer beneath is going to come through my exact areas where I have just O3 data. And this is beautiful because this is an exact recombination um, um, that, that we need. So I hope you guys are following this. If not, take some time to think about how layer masks work. Uh, black lets through detail from the layer beneath, white blocks it. And so if you don't have those fundamentals down, you might not understand exactly what's going on here. But if you just study it for a while and get to understanding it, it will click and you'll say, oh, I understand exactly now why this O3 data will pass through and recombine perfectly as O3 data on top of HA data. Um, and so so the next step is uh, the level combination might be a little too harsh. And so we hit control M and what I do is this is kind of uh, to my taste, my data set is I usually bring this um, black point up to kind of right about here. Um, the, my histogram is usually separated into four Y axis tick marks, one, two, three, four. And I bring it up to about one and a half. And then in the middle, I kind of pull it down to where it meets the center line. And it creates a black black areas that are, aren't as, as deep as you saw before and a little less um, pronounced, but subtle enough to create a nice mixture. So now if we go back to this data, whoa, you've seen there's some kind of transformation has occurred that's just magnificent and it looks very Hubble palette like. Um, and so at this point we know, whoa, we're, we're onto something here and it does look a little more green, but the green is combining with the orange, creating this kind of dustier look. That's just absolutely stunning. And it creates much more breathtaking images. And this is because the true O3 data is recombining correctly with the H uh, a data. So this is just, in my opinion, absolutely beautiful, elegant solution in Photoshop for recombining in narrow band. So if you guys start using these techniques, please uh, shout me out for a while. Um, you know, I've worked hard to create and think of these processes to recombine narrow band data in the best way possible in Photoshop. And I'm sharing all my, all my uh, juicy techniques and tools with you all. So just keep me in mind when you post data, give me shout outs. I like seeing that and I, and I highly appreciate it. 
And so now at this point, what we do is we hit Control, Alt, Shift, E, and we stamp that up into a layer all on its own. Once again, creating a non-destructive uh, workflow. So now you might have guessed it, what comes next? We do the same thing, but for H beta. So H beta, we bring below this new layer. This new layer, what I'm gonna call is HA03, cause it's the HA and O3 combined. And now with the H beta below, what we do is we can toggle it off and only have the H beta come through, H beta data, select that layer, hit control A, control C. Now we can toggle these two layers on Click the HAO3 and we're going to apply a layer mask to it. And then we're going to alt click into the layer mask, control V, paste that H beta data in there and then hit control I. Same thing we did. Now this time we're going to go control L. We're going to adjust the levels here as such. Hit OK, control M. Shift this guy to about one and a half tick marks and bring it down, hit OK, and come here. And now we really see that, that blue coming through. And so we're still not there yet, but we're really, really close. And this is the cool part. So we're going to hit Control, Alt, Shift, E. And now what we have in this layer here is HA03H. Beta. And now you could use this with any any collected filter data you have. If you have an LX stream and you only have two layers, you could um, you could reuse your O3 layer twice and create an HOO um, layer, but you could recombine it using these techniques. Or if you're using a monochrome camera and a filter wheel and you're using Photoshop to process your data, you can use your individual layers just like this to create an HAO, HAS203 um combination, your standard kind of combination. Or if you're using a triad ultra like me, you can follow this tutorial to a T. Uh, all the same, same process. So now this is our combined data. And at this point, we need to clean some stuff up. So I'm going to go control alt shift E, create a non-destructive workflow. This guy stays intact. And <clears throat> now what I'm going to do here is some level adjustments. Hit control L. And you can see in each channel, the, the white and the midpoint and the gray, or the white, gray point and black point all need some adjusting. But this is perfectly fine. It will help align our, our color balance and everything. It will make it look really good. Let's go to the histogram, by the way, and look. So things aren't perfectly aligned, right? But our level should help fix that. Okay, so let's start with the blue channel. We'll come down here, and I'm just going to push the blue channel such that this middle gray point is coming right to where the data just kind of perfectly flattens out. And if you notice here, um, the black point kind of stays where it, where it is. There's no real need there. Um, the green point, let's adjust it slightly for the black point and then pull this guy in to about right there. And then for the red channel, it needs a lot of adjusting here. Pull it in. We might have to do a few iterations on this guy. So let's just pull the data in right at the edge. Hit OK. So histogram still looks more uh, imbalanced so we're going to have to work on the color balance some but um, definitely now we're seeing this unique combination where the data is kind of mixing right like I didn't mask in blue colors here like with a paintbrush right tool I'm not like perfectly paint brushing in these details here this is the natural dominance of these colors and how they're recombining and if you look at many of the wizard nebula data it's really dominant blue in in kind of the core area and then it's kind of the the darker richer uh, ha sulfur 2 data that kind of surrounds the back side of it and and out here in this little cloud here um, so let's go ahead and stamp that to a new level or a new layer sorry 
And uh, begin the next step. Okay, so now this is where things kind of start getting a little interesting because we have the, the very basis of our color mixture, but it doesn't look 100% correct. And if we go to the histogram, right, it's not kind of kind of balanced very well. And so what we do is we start tweaking the levels um, slightly more. So we already did one levels correction, and so now we're going to do another. But in this case, we're just going to slightly um, adjust the red to maybe about right, right here, kind of just pulling off um, some of the red and then just hitting OK. Then stamp Control Alt Shift E up. Now what we're going to do here is just say red level adjust. We pulled the reds off because why I knew to do that is we're dominant red, right? But our mixture is, is getting there. That's where we want. But we're dominant red, so I want to pull out some of that red. And, and that's that's a drastic reduction. But what I want to do now is pull out greens. But I'm going to use this tool called Asta La Vista Green. It's a free tool. Um, you can install it. It's by Deep Sky Colors. So you can, I'll post the link in the description. Um, it's just another kind of preset that you can load in as a filter. And they have all the instructions on their website. It's really easy to do. Once you have Asta La Vista Green installed, hit it. And what I want to do is a weak removal. You can do strong, medium, or weak for removing green. I use weak. And what's cool about this tool is it removes the green while trying to keep the color balance. So I'm going to hit it once. And yes, I, I really like that kind of nuking out the green. And you see that I'm slowly getting back, but I want to do it yet again. And I'm going to hit OK. And yes, I'm really liking that. And so I think two there, just doing a week, twice, maybe we could have done a medium, got away with it, but I like making small adjustments. Hit Control, Alt, Shift, E, stamp that forward. And now we're going to do a levels adjustment. And so you guys might think I'm crazy now because now I'm going to say, hey, we need to push that red back in. Um, but, but we just don't need as much. So if you look at the red, green and blue, they can probably all be readjusted again. The blue is actually looking good and that makes sense because we didn't really do much to it, but we did do stuff to the green channel and the red channel. So I'm going to do exactly the crazy thing and say, let's boost the green back in, even though I don't like it. Let's go ahead and boost the green to about there. And let's boost that red back in. And now we can kind of eyeball kind of what we like in terms of the red inclusion here of the data. Let's stay about right here. Now I'm going to hit Control Alt Shift E and I'm going to repeat this process. HLVG again. Asa La Vista Green. Go to Filter, Deep Sky Colors, HLV, go to Weak. And look at that. That's just with one iteration. You can probably do one more and we'll see how that goes. And if, if we don't like it, we'll undo that. But, oh yeah, I really, really like it right there. Control, Alt, Shift, E. And so this is a really good starting point now to apply um, the detail and contrast enhancement highlights, etc. This is, uh, this is where, where we'd kind of start um, the normal kind of processing techniques that you'd use on an image to enhance details. So where I typically go from this point is um, I like using my HA layer as a luminosity layer. And so I'm going to toggle off all my layers except for my HA layer. And I'm just going to copy it. Control C, Control V. And then I'm going to bring that copy all the way to the top. And I'm going to enable this layer one below it. This is kind of where we were, right? And now I'm going to change the operation mode on this layer from normal to luminosity. And look at what that has done, the contrast differences. I'm going to turn it on and off. One of the good things is we have a lot of noise shining through in, in this, this red. Oh, we have great details. But now what happens is when we add that HA luminance layer, the contrast just in this area just is superb. And in those areas where we had that interesting kind of red noisy features, they're kind of 
kind of muted out or kind of flattened out slightly and less enhanced while the contrast and details in this main area are massively enhanced. So let's just look at that again. Especially look at the details in the O3 layer that's coming out, right? The oxygen three that's really shining through here. If I click this on, it just really pronounces it and brings it out, makes the data look really cool. And once again, this is just from recombining the data using masking, not with the paintbrush tool. We didn't paint anything in here. This combination is, is truly in its most natural form. And it's just beautiful, very elegant way of recombining the data in its true form. Um, it's just, uh, it still blows my mind. So if we go to opacity here, we can adjust this. So if you think, oh, that was kind of a lot, maybe too much, you know, you could go down to 50% and say, do you like, do you like 50%? Like you could go to zero and that's where we started, right? Um, 25%, it's up to you and kind of your, your feel for the data. There's 50%. Um, it, it, it's all up dependent on the image you're working on and the data. Um, 90%, 90% looks pretty good. Um, but even 100%, I kind of just like the straight 100 because we'll be doing more operations to this um, data. And so I renamed this layer here to just HA loom for HA luminance layer. And then I go control alt shift E. And now this is my, my HA 03 H beta with luminance data layer. Um, so we've made some great leaps so far at, at processing this data, but it's got us to an amazing point where our data is combined absolutely beautiful and and in its most stunning form and so make sure as you do this you hit control s and save your progress along okay so now what i want to do is instead of going through camera raw let's go ahead and look at um, levels and adjust them so here in the histogram they're not perfectly aligned and our white point looks a little off so let's go ahead and go through the channel and by doing this, we'll kind of correct the colors and bring some stuff out more. So we just want to adjust the black point right to the, the bottom of the data on each channel here. And as you see, the, the colors are changing somewhat for the better, very subtly. And then I'm going to hit OK for that. Now let's do it again. But this time on the RGB for all colors, we're just going to bring in that, that white point a little We'll do a couple things. One, it will boost the colors, and then two, it will also brighten our image specifically in this area over here. So I'm gonna hit OK. Correct, and now we have a little bit more of a color balance. So I'm gonna call that just kind of color balance for short. Control Shift Alt E, stamp it to a new layer, and now I'm gonna do another round of denoise. And I'm gonna use um, Topaz Labs to do that. So I'm going to use the, their plugin. So if you install it here, you'll get that plugin built in. Um, let's see, yeah, we can zoom in to 50%, say maybe even like 33 or yeah, 33% to really get the full um, nebula in there. And here I want to go into this low light mode and kind of bump down uh, enhance sharpness because I don't really want to enhance sharpness too much. We'll see. And and then I'll go ahead and do auto here, see what they want to show. Yeah, they want a lot of sharpening. That's what it's saying. But let's just see what we get out of some light noise reduction. I'll hit update. And I apologize if this 1080p quality isn't that great. I'm using OBS Studio and it's been giving me problems with my monitor and, and so I have to record in 1080p is, uh, instead of 4K. And so uh, the details might not look as great on your screen as they do to me, but so I'd, I'd encourage you, of course, to do this on your own with the data that I supply and see how well um, it, it's looking through these iterations. Um, so let's see how this, this looks. And so here's where we started and here's what it wants. Um, I don't see too much of anything. One thing I do want to do is a slight um, 
color noise reduction just to see how that helps out typically. Let's go ahead and bump the noise reduction to about 30 and see if we gain any benefit. So once again, this is kind of like a looking at your settings and playing with them and seeing what maximizes the data to your liking. And that's what you do. So once this is done, we'll see what we have working with. And once, once you've settled on where you're at, you just hit this apply button. It applies it to all the pixels and then it just puts it back into your Photoshop layer this way. So if I'm looking at fine details, there is definitely some, some noise reduction, but I'm curious if I just go to the denoise AI algorithm, um, hit auto and go with what it wants, but maybe bump the noise reduction to like an eight and see, see the difference here. And so this is with a whole lot more sharpening if I boost the color noise reduction. Oh yeah, that's taking a lot out. Go to 50. It's brought in some more definition. Let's bump the noise reduction 45, 45 and see. I do. That may be a lot, but we'll see what we get. All right, so that's definitely done a, a lot to our data, especially in the noise areas. Um, a little too much for my liking. I'd back that down to probably like 25. And let's do a tighter one so it updates a little quicker now. So I think that's still too much denoise. Go down to like 12, 13 or something. Let's do 12. All right, and let's now recover some detail in there. Back it down to about 20. Here we go, I'm liking this. Like if you look at the detail in some of these areas, just looks a little bit cleaner. And the color noise reduction good. So I'm gonna apply that and we'll start there. All right, so here we are with the, the denoised image. Go back and forth between them. Can't see too much. I can see probably a little more on my screen than you can with the, the HD resolution. But um, I like the fine details that it did kind of noise reduce here and so this process can become very creative and you can really bring out a, a whole swath of colors to your image if you want to so what i mean by that is this is combining three different colors of split complementary colors and recombining them such that you get this natural color contrast using luminance um, topaz denoise, um, HLVG for green removal to really bring out um, the mixture of colors. And so in general, um, that, that would be one way you'd produce an image. Um, but you could do multiple different types of split complementaries or slight offsets from the split complementary colors, do two different processes. And then you could actually merge them together in certain ways. And so I'm not going to do a video on that. That's just kind of a, a creative process in general that uh, is simple enough to figure out um, how to do from this point on if you want to mix them. But this is kind of the basic narrowband workflow that I go through for recombining data. And certain data is more interesting than others. All the data recombines differently. You can, like I said, start with a more red color instead of the orange color. The orange color produces these kind of natural looking dusty clouds, um, which I personally like with more of a bluers uh, regions. You can get reds out in certain datas. Naturally, the, the data will be 
wanting to be more on the red side in the hue spectrum. And you'll see that I get that in a lot of my images. And it, it just really depends on kind of where you want to go with your data. But this is the basics, the basic steps that you'd take. And so this video is kind of running long for uh, kind of method one and method two. And so I think I'm going to stop it here. However, what I want to do is just recombine the stars and kind of have a slightly finished image from method two. So what I want to do is open up my um, stars only image right here and recombine. And I do want to do one more step after denoise. And I always like to uh, brighten up the image some just through a normal brightness contrast. Whoops, hit the wrong thing there. Normal brightness contrast adjustment. Um, and so you can kind of boost it up some and then boost the contrast back. Um, sometimes it's too much and you blow out certain areas. So you gotta be careful. Once again, it's just one of these things for adjustments and you can tog toggle on and off. Like, yeah, I kinda, kinda like that. It's brightened it up enough to where we even see detail in this little cloud out here. So I like that. So now I'm gonna go here to my star layer. Um, and of course, when you're stacking data, your stars naturally get bloat due to stacking. And so what I like to do is minimize, um, do some star minimization first in a duplicate layer. Make stars smaller, I call it. So there's an action tool set. Maybe most people have it um, by now, but it's this astronomy tools. Uh, I use version 1.6. So you can use that and they actually have a uh, make star smaller function or you can use in the other category filters, a minimum filter. Um, I like the make star smaller option. It, it seems to work slightly better than the minimum, but honestly, there's hardly a difference between the two. So if you do the minimum, you can kind of see exactly what it did right away. If I back it all the way back to where it was and then slightly move in, you can see that it's really minimizes the stars there. And you can kind of play with that until you're happy with uh, what one of your stars is looking like. Um, or you can use this tool. So I'm going to use this one to, just to show the difference here. Make stars smaller and hit it, run it once. Uh, this tool makes uh, a little bit more subtle adjustments, smaller adjustments at first. And so you can see that I can toggle it on and off. So that's before, after, and then maybe I'll run it one more time. The difference I think here is that between the make star smaller and the minimum is that if you overdo it on the minimum, you can kind of press towards square looking stars, at least in this data set. Um, I'm sampled really well for my camera to focal length and, and aperture size so that I get a nice sampling. And so I don't really, I, I have pretty round stars when my guiding's good, but uh, I can push them towards squares using that minimum filter. But if I use make star smaller, typically it, it does a good job. So I like about there. I think that's that's good. Um, the other option you can do is play around with kind of boosting colors in your stars before you recombine them back. You can even do that in camera raw filter. Um, it's hard to see because camera raw wants to tell you, oh, your image is too black. You need to boost the whites. But really, you can kind of boost the vibrance, say to 20, and maybe your saturation up to like 10, and we'll see what that does for us. So if I toggle on and off, not too much of a difference, honestly. I see some small changes in like red stars and bluer stars, so that's still good. So at this point, I'm gonna click layer one here, control A, control C, Go over here, hit control V for my stars and then kind of look at what might look best. There's the screen option that kind of brings your stars through and then there's the, the linear dodge add. And so you can kind of toggle on and off to see what you think is best when you do that recombine. But this looks uh, pretty good, pretty decent image. And, and so as for this example, I think this is good enough, but usually, um, 
depending on the image, I may go uh, really crazy into the details and I might do multiple split complementary colors and, and blend them together in, in different ways. But, uh, as for the nor the narrow band process of recombining data, this is what I do. And I think that, uh, it, it's quite an amazing trick to see done on data and the data it produces is just a uh, lovely recombination. So if I open up our first, just uh, normally stretched data with stars in it and I hit okay. This is the difference between our two here. This guy to this guy. And so this one definitely has a lot more contrast and, and color blending. And so um, I like, I like this. So once again, you could uh, boost different colors too. You could play around making it a little bit more red instead of the, the dusty color that I chose here. Um, really the, the sky's the limit with your imagination at this point and kind of where you go from here. So thanks for watching this and maybe I'll post a, a method three here soon um, on the pixel math way to combine colors. That's a totally different way and it, and it kind of does a very similar job to this, but, but different in a, in a different way. Um, I think this is the best way ultimately, but method three is a unique way and it, and it follows uh, PixInsight's way of recombination. So thanks for watching. And once again, if you reproduce this data or use this tutorial, uh, I like seeing shout outs. So shout me out at my, on my Instagram channel, um, or sorry, my Instagram page. I'll put my Instagram handle there. And uh, until next time, uh, I'll see you then.